We're negotiating with the, with the unions. We've met three times. They're going to meet again today. Hopefully we can come to some resolutions. It is my goal solely to get money in state employees' pockets as quickly as possible because we don't have the federal funds. So we can push them over to the unemployment. They have the five-day wait. Then they can get some revenue. Hopefully this will be resolved quickly and certainly the 17th is a critical day for the United States and if we go beyond that it's going to be really, really bad. How do you, how do you respond to um, those who say this is an overreach of power? Well, read the Constitution. Governor, have you consulted? I mean, it, it, it's, an, it's an authority the governor has in, in the, the state of emergency. I believe that having 2,700 people who work for the state who depend on federal funds for their paycheck as an emergency, and we don't have the money. So if that's an overreach, I, over, I overreached. Governor, but I, I think it's necessary. Have you consulted with any other members of the IGA or any other governors to see if this is action that's being contemplated by others? Or? Well, we, we, we've talked to them. The problem is every state constitution is different and they have different powers. Our staff is making a list of what powers each governor has and doesn't have. Uh, this, in our case, uh, frankly, I made the decision because I, the, the first decision was to get employees' paychecks, and that was the only alternative we had. We met with the union. They, they told us that they were going to watch it and watch us monitor and managing the crisis, and they decided at some point, so we're waiting for that. At that right. point, I don't know, yes. but in the meantime, the only option I had other than this was to lay people off for three days, bring them back, and we've done that, and the money to pay them is coming out of the governor's contingency fund so that they can get some money. Then we either have to lay them off again, or we go for a permanent layoff and they get two more days, then they go to one point. So it's, it's a quick way of getting funds. All those people who get laid off, just once the Fed straightens this out, will be brought back to work. Oh, absolutely. Sure, sure. Believe me. We're, we're, I, and one of the things that this allows me to do is to waive the area that they have to go look for work. Because one of the conditions on employment that go look for work, I don't want them to go look for work. We need them. They're trained and they're important to us. And how many of these 2,700 people are you think are at risk of getting furloughed? Well, there's already 100 that have been furloughed. Every day is bringing more on. Uh, some of the people are 100% paid by federal government, uh, federal fund. Others are 75. Others are 50. Others are 25. Every day that this continues, there are going to be more. What we've identified is there are 2,739 people in the state that have some form of federal funding to their paycheck, tied to their <coughs> paycheck. That is the part. Every day there are going to be more. If this goes on beyond, let's say the next 10 days, you could eventually you'll see all 2,700. But believe me, the 17th of this month is a critical day for the United States of America. Obviously, I'm guessing you want them to raise the debt ceiling. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. It's a federal problem. I don't do their work, and I hope they don't go try to do mine. <laughs> do you intend to honor the portions of the collective bargaining agreements with regard to bumping? I know the union is a little bit concerned that this action may affect well, let me tell you this. We do not have the capacity to bump 2,739 jobs in 10 days. We simply can't get it done. And if it gets done, if we attempt it, there is a lot of services that won't be going out on time. And so we are, gonna, we are doing everything humanly possible to honor the, the collective bargaining agreement. That's why we called him early on last Friday. We wanted to. We want to work with him. We want. We want this not to be a management and labor problem. We want it to be we're working together to get money in the employees' pockets. So you're saying the union was involved with the discussions early on, sir? Oh yeah, last week. We Thank started you. last week. We've had three meetings with them. They're ongoing. Four meetings. Four meetings. They're ongoing. And we're trying to get to a position where we can all agree we're doing the best thing for the employees. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This idea of the civil uh, emergency declaration come, like, sort of come to be, it sounds like, from, like it sounds like it came pretty late. Um,
Well, we asked the legislative leaders last Friday to meet, and they couldn't meet till today. We were hoping to have a discussion on Monday. So for them to say that we didn't reach out, we did. We wanted to have a meeting on Monday to discuss. We had a meeting last Friday with the unions. We wanted to have a meeting with the legislative leaders uh, in the uh, Monday morning. Quite frankly, this whole idea of uh, this civil emergency was just popped up in someone's mind yesterday. We looked at the laws, and it gives us some more flexibility to manage the crisis. That's all this does. It's a tool. Who came up with the idea, sir? It was so simultaneously. I was talking to Hank while Carly was thinking about it, and then two got together. So yeah, I just talked to Governor about that. So that's how it came about. Thank you. Thank you.